Welcome back to Ozarks Tonight. Well, if you have lived in Springfield for a while, you may be familiar or have noticed a small service station at the corner of West Bypass and Division Street. And if you haven't seen it, that's okay. We are learning more about it here on Ozarks Tonight. It's a tiny piece of Springfield history dating back to the heydays of Route 66, and it's still open for business. Once again, we have Caitlin McConnell of Ozarks Alive here with us. Caitlin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So if you're not familiar with Ozarks Alive, it's a blog that Caitlin writes, and it's all about the culture, traditions, and history of everything around the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. So today we are talking about this tiny gas station, Danny's Service mm -hmm. Station, right? Service Center. Service almost, Center. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, how did you come about? Let me do a story about Danny's Service Center. Well, you know, to kind of answer that question, I might back up just a little bit and say, you know, a lot of the things I do about Ozarks Alive, I just find when I'm out driving around, you know, and something that grabs my attention. And so in this case, this was one of those situations where I um, drove actually have driven several times by this little service station and it looked so unusual in this day and age. You know, you see primarily chain gas stations and things like that. And even in this case, there is um, a chain gas station catty corner from this one and there's another one that's going in straight across the street. And I thought, well, how is how unusual that clearly what seems to be um, a locally owned small town, sort, uh, so to speak, store is still here. And so I thought that just there must be a story there. Especially with the competition right. right across the street and the convenience mm -hmm. and the other things that it has there. One of the things I noticed oh, is right. that the owner who you talk to knows everyone yeah. who walks in there. And that is probably what keeps it still open to this day. I would guess so. I mean, I was there from probably, I don't know, around 8 to sometime after 9 on Saturday. And after a while, there was just one person right after the other, and they all seemed to be acquainted with him. I don't think there was anyone uh, besides me who just popped in to, to kind of, um, as a first time. And that was really nice. It was clearly that, at least in a lot of these situations, there had been relationships for a long time. And I'm sure that is part of the reason that it's fun. So Wayne Peruse, the owner there now, he will be 72, mm -hmm. you said. What was he like? Tell me about your interaction with him, your conversations with him. Well, he was great. He was very friendly, and I was um, I was super enthused to get to meet him. You know, I'd actually kind of had the story on my list for a while, and it had been difficult for us to connect. And so, he, since he was working on Saturday, it worked out to do the story. Um, but you know, it's it's amazing too. That's a whole kind of story of its own, where you see somebody who's been connected with something for so long. And today, we don't often see that. But he actually started working there back when he was in his early 20s and he's been there ever since. He purchased the business a few years after he started and you know he worked for the original Danny whose name I believe was E.L. Daniel and he owned several service stations in uh, Springfield as I've since learned from old newspapers and things um, but he uh, acquired the business back you know in the 70s and since publishing the story you know I found out even more about its history that I didn't know before I wrote it and that's one of the really neat things about these stories too is you know with history sometimes you have to search for pieces and you don't find out until after you've published something, um, some of those gaps and some people have come forward and talked about how they knew that actually the service station started even earlier than we um, expected and it had gotten sold to Mr. Daniel. Um, I believe it was just around 1960 or a little bit after that. And so it was neat to kind of piece in another whole of that story. And it's a community effort. It kind of mm -hmm. almost takes a village for you to piece all of this together because you write one of these, you post it, mm -hmm. and then a lot of people on Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. I can read the comments and see people, oh, I remember this, I remember that, or a family member told me this or told me that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really interesting about your blog is that it has, um, you are highlighting these little pieces of history here and there, and then mm -hmm. it, it sparks the conversation among the community. That's right, and, and the plus too is that you find out about other story ideas. You know, like when I published this one, um, people also were commenting on similar businesses that are in Springfield to this one as well. And so it's like, well, maybe that's a future story, but there are places that um, I didn't always know the history of or know the significance, and it's always nice to have that, that input to be able to learn even more. Did you talk to any customers while you were there? I talked to a couple. It was just kind of brief conversations, but um, you know, all of them seemed like it was that relationship thing where they'd been coming for years and it just seemed like a good place to keep coming to.
Do you have any other ideas on your list that you will be working on here in the near future that you have just kind of found by driving around mm -hmm. or overhearing conversations? There's actually um, a little shop, and I won't give too much away because I want it to kind of be a surprise, but um, you know, on my ways uh, down into Arkansas recently, I've come across just this little tiny shop at this crossroads where a woman um, makes uh, blown glass actually that she learned how to do I believe from her mom I don't know all the details yet because we haven't um, done an interview but I've been in conversation with her about um, coming down and setting something up to do a story and yeah like you said that's another one where I was just driving around I thought that looks really interesting and there must be a story there and that is an example for all of us, I think, to start paying attention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you drive to and from work and you don't even remember your commute mm -hmm. because you're just so used to doing it. And the thing that it reminds me of as well is that all of us have a story. You know, you don't have to be famous or, you know, win an amazing award or whatever to have a unique story. Everybody does. That's kind of an example is like Humans of New York. You know, everybody is familiar or a lot of people are familiar with that Facebook group where you get to hear the stories of normal people. Well, that's mm -hmm. the truth here, too, where everybody has something special about them. And I think that once we hear those stories, we all think it's really interesting to be able to learn about that side of somebody's life. And something you can relate to. That's right. Caitlin McConnell with Ozarks Alive. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And if you want to find out more or read this blog entry or other ones, it's ozarksalive.com. We'll be right back with more right here on Ozarks Fox.